very little bit of training. So it comes in 556, 762 by 39, 300 blackout or 68. Uh, those are all changeable uh, with a combination of barrel and bolt. Stock adjusts with this button. So, and back. Collapsible stock, meaning it folds and locks in place. The gun can be fired with the stock fold. It's got a zero MOA rail all the way across the top. This allows for mounting of, of whatever normal accessories that you would see. Uh, the barrel offset is about two and five eighths instead of two and a half with a normal mount, so you have a little more offset. So that's uh, a training point that if you're going to use the gun, you need to practice with the offset. Uh, it has a non-removable pistol grip, an M4 style safety. However, you guys will see quickly when we're shooting it, especially if you're used to shooting the M4, it sits higher than the safety on the M4 does. So it's a little more deliberate. So what I want you to do, we already want you to grip even on the M4, we want you to grip the gun as high as you can. So when we're gripping this gun, we need to grip it as high as we possibly can and flag your thumb just like you're shooting a 1911. Rest on the safety. If you can see the dot through the optic, the safety's off. If you cannot see the dot through the optic, where's the safety? Uh, selector's on safe, right? Moving forward. <coughs> Given the completely ambidextrous nature of the gun, this is the bolt catch. It's on both sides. So up, locks the bolt to the rear, down, drops it. And that works on both sides. Is anybody here left-handed? Oh, thank goodness. So the good thing is with this gun, it doesn't matter. Um, what I do and what we teach is when you're locking the bolt to the rear, you use your trigger finger. If you're dropping the bolt, especially while inserting a magazine, you use your thumb. That make sense? Magazine release is ambidextrous. It's here on this side, and it's here on this side. They are not uh, symmetrical to each other on each side of the gun. So it's something that needs to be trained with. If you've got a left-handed shooter who's going to be using it, it's going to be a little bit lower, more in the position that a standard M4 is. The charging handle is completely ambidextrous, so when I show you how to switch it from left-handed to right-handed shooting, I'll show you that, but it's got a reciprocating charging handle. Accessory rails on the bottom, both sides and the top. A note, uh, when you're setting the gun up, the side rails, unlike an M4, are not co-aligned to the center axis of the bore. So, when you're zeroing lasers and things like that, you need to keep that in mind. You may think, gosh, I'm moving this an awful lot. It's because it's offset slightly. And that's in order to make room for the quick change barrel. The gas block. You'll notice it's in uh, the normal position. Uh, stick a bullet tip in it and turn it. And you can change the size of the gas port to allow either more or less gas. Obviously, if you're running a suppressor, you want less gas. If you're running normal ammunition or even uh, light powered loads, uh, 50 grains and lower, you want to have the gas port wide open. So to change it, we just put the tip of a bullet in there and turn it till it clicks. We're going to be running these wide open. Good. It's got a, these have a 16 inch barrel. We also have a 14 and a half inch barrel and a 10.3 inch barrel variation and an A2 flash hider. The barrels are all chrome lined, cold hammer forged, one and seven barrels. Good? All right, let's talk about make it in it, making it ambidextrous. So, with no tools other than a bullet, I can switch this quickly from right handed to left handed shooting. The first thing I'm going to do is switch the ejection. So I can make this gun eject out either side. There's a pin right here. Whichever side you push it to is the side it's going to eject out of. So right now it's pushed to the right, so it's going to eject traditionally to the right. If I want to switch this around, even if I'm not a left-handed shooter, if I just don't want to put brass to the right, for instance, I'm behind the driver in a vehicle and I don't want to rain brass down his neck while he's trying to drive, I just push this until it clicks and now it's going to eject out the left side of the gun. If I want to continue switching it, I pull the charging handle back to this witness mark. If you can't see it, you probably want to come up so that you can see it or get around his camera to see it.
pull it back to that witness mark and then pull the the bolt catch or correction the charging handle all the way out turn it all the way through the gun and push it back in now it's a completely left-handed gun so the advantages for this especially in an armoring situation or it doesn't matter who you're giving the rifle to, they're left-handed, right-handed, whatever, they, the user can quickly configure it to whichever side they would like. To change it back, it's obviously just the reverse. Pull it back to the witness mark. Pull it out, turn it over, and then switch the ejection back to right side ejection. Good? Any questions about that? To maintain this gun, it can be broken down into its main component parts, including the barrel and the uh, barrel extension. So, to take it apart, fold the stock. This part is going to be different because there's no pins used uh, because they can get bent, lost, whatever. So, for those of you who are, especially those of you who are very used to the M4, this is going to be different. First step is to push the safety in the wrong direction. So I'm pushing the safety up. Next, I'm going to depress the top of this plate and pull the lower receiver out. That's the lower receiver. This is not the serial numbered part. So if you want to shoot a 7.62 by 39, it takes AK mags, you just buy a new one of these, new barrel, a new bolt. That's the lower receiver. Notice that the trigger group is all kind of one piece. If this needs to be worked on, it's probably not even a unit armor level uh, function. Uh, this is something that costs whatever it costs. Pull a new one out of supply and put it on the gun and it runs. To remove the bolt carrier, we pull it back to the witness mark. Pull the charging handle, make it straight, pull it out of the gun. Next, we can pull the barrel out to clean it. Who here has tried to, uh, not to sound too much like Billy Mays, but who has tried to clean the inside of an M4 chamber, especially the lugs? So, you have to clean them. Yeah, I actually don't, I just lube them, but that's the complete barrel assembly. I can pull that out, put a 10.3 inch barrel in it, put whatever I want. So now this is a serialized part of the gun. And this will take any combination of caliber, barrel length, whatever you want. To finish taking this down for maintenance, we compress this spring, turn, pull this out, and then the barrel or the bolt will rotate out theoretically. Of course, I'm being videoed. Why is it like a I, I combination of those things? Oh, yeah, thank you. That comes out. The firing pin, you can press it a little bit. This is the firing pin retention clip. And the firing pin does have its own spring. So that is field stripped. Put it back together. And obviously, depending on the level of user, you may not want them to go that far. There's no gas being expelled into the action, so these tend to stay extremely clean. The, the issue becomes one of lubrication, not cleaning inside the action of the gun. So, of course, I do that upside down. Put this back in. Yeah, it's the cam pin and the firing pin retention device. Is Correct. Yep. So what's happening is line you up just perfectly. What's happening there is when you push the button on the back of the upper receiver, it's deactivating one of these two extractors. Mm -hmm. So the other one, or I'm sorry, it's activating one or the other, the extractor. So one of them has pressure on them while the other one does not.
slide it back in the grooves. Theoretically, won't go together unless it's perfect. It's got to be something I'm doing, right? Yeah. Unprecedented. That's what locks Dave, I think you're making them nervous. That's what it must be. It has to go in. Oh, the bolt's not. Out, and once you've built that windows mark and lock it out, then you can take hands off and it won't uh, go either. Right. Thank you, Rafe. The grandfather of the AR. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Put the barrel back in before the bolt's all the way forward. Receiver back on. Why is this freaking gun being so difficult with me? Seriously. ARX100. Good? Question.